presentation we will take a look at the year-end payroll forms the 941 the 940 and where that data can be found with the payroll reports within quickbooks for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. In order to open the open windows, go to the view drop down and the open windows list. We're now going to go to the reports up top. We're going to go to the employee and payroll and open up the payroll summary report. Within payroll summary, we're going to change the dates to the fourth quarter. It's going to be 10 01 21 to 12 31 21. So that's October 1st to December 31st. This report will give us the employees up top and it's going to give us the total. And notice we're looking at the total for the month of October. So we can use this information to kind of think about and think out where the, where the numbers are coming from from the 941. Clearly, if we had paid for the payroll, we could run the payroll and QuickBooks would help to process that payroll information. It's useful, however, to know what reports are, are making this information up and try to see if we can sort this information out to see how the payroll forms are created by QuickBooks. So if we go back over here and note that we're gonna have the same kind of issue if we, if, as we did in the third quarter when we looked at the 941s, if we double click on the salary total here, you'll note we'll have the detail and it'll give us uh, October, November, December, and then December. Why? Uh, you, you would think we'd only have three months instead of four in here. And that's because of this timing difference. Remember that the payroll, is going to be processed, QuickBooks will process in accordance with payroll regulations on a cash basis, not an accrual basis. And on our um, Excel problem, we basically ran the problem as if we processed the payroll check in the, the same month as the pay period happened. So in other words, this check should have been run in order to tie out to the QuickBooks report and to the Excel report as of the end of September, the end of the pay period. And that will put us all on, an, it'll take away the cash versus accrual kind of problem here that happens within payroll, which will demonstrate uh, that timing difference more so in another example problem. So in other words, what we'd like to see here in the fourth quarter to tie out to uh, the, the Excel worksheet is just these uh, three quarters, November, uh, December. So this would be October, November, and December actual payrolls. And therefore, I'm going to change the date just a little bit to, to tie out to those numbers. So we're going to close this back out. And just be aware of that. You're going to have that timing difference. We'll, we'll show that timing difference in, a, in another example. But for now, we want to keep it the accrual and the cash pretty much the same. So we can see where all these numbers are basically being generated from and tie them out in terms of just calculations. So I'm going to change this to uh, 10 2. And if we do that, we go one more month up or one more day up. And then if we double click on this item again, we'll see that we just have the three months that we're going to say is the fourth quarter here. So I'm going to close that back out. Hope that makes sense. And that comes out to uh, 144, 3, uh, 233, 232, 144, 232. Now, if we go to our information on our Excel sheet, that's in essence what we're breaking out here on our Excel sheet. If we were to add up the, the full quarter, we would say that the fourth quarter then is the 144,232 in the fourth quarter uh, here. And then if we were to add up the two quarters that we had for the third quarter and the fourth quarter, then we would be adding up the total of the 141,206. And so if we went, in other words, for the entire year, 0101, to one we're at the one uh the 241 206 so let's go back to 10 21 so this is going to be the fourth quarter if we use this to just go down our 941 we scroll down we see the first one was the wages and tips and other compensation that's going to be the 135 909 if we go back over here we, we're going to take out remember the 401k it basically in essence for the wages and tips for the FIT wages and tips. And that's going to be then this 135,909. That's going to be that item there. Then we're going to have the withholdings. The withholdings are going to be this 25,212. Uh, 
of that 25 to 12 we can't really recalculate it because it's one of that it's that complicated attack it is what it is whatever we calculated it to be in the system is what we're going to have in the system 25 to 12 it might be different by rounding as we entered it into the system here but it's 25 uh, 197 in our system here not sure exactly what that difference is it I was 14 dollars, but i'm not sure exactly how we came up with that difference a little bit higher than rounding but just remember that in essence whatever the system calculates for the federal income tax withholding is what it is because we can't recalculate it we can't recheck it because it's too complex it's a progressive system so uh, whatever we input into the system that is what's going to be in the system whether we let the the system calculate it within the payroll system or whether we enter it in there manually whatever we entered is what we entered the if we look at the medicare and social security though those are items we can recalculate so that, those are items in other words on the reports here they're going to want the actual full number in terms of the wages subject to the social security medicare and then to recalculate so remember that as we looked at when we looked at this problem this this number here is basically twice the rate 0 0.062 0 0.0149 is doubled so 0.124 so to get these numbers we can get these numbers because those will be in our report similar to how we had the federal uh, tax withholding but we're also going to have to double check we can recheck we're going to need these numbers and that's going to be the wages the actual wages subject to in this case social security and medicare so this wage up top is going to be the confusing part we don't really have anything for that because remember somebody hit the cap and so we don't have on this report there's not an easy way for us to say okay who hit the cap what what we do know is is that this is the tax that has been calculated and we know what the rate is this is only half so meaning this is the employee half so if i took the 6053.23 and divided by the rate which is 6.2 percent of 0 0.062 that gives us the 97,632. So we can kind of back into what the Social Security wages were that we input into the system. And, and you'll re recall that we had one employee that hit the cap. Our large earner hit the cap and therefore had no more wages subject. So as long as we know what that cap is, then we can enter that number here and we can recalculate it. So it's twice that because uh, we have 12,106. <clears throat> And that is, of course, the 6053.23 times 2. So that's the 1206 about rounding. So that's going to be that one. Now, the, the Medicare is straightforward because it's going to use the total wages. It doesn't have that cap situation. And we're not taking out anything from it as we did with the FIT and the 401k. So we just have that 144,232. Again, twice this amount gives us the uh 4182 so that 4182 uh is going to be here it is in essence this 2091.39 times 2 and we know that the total wages is this 144,232.50. so we've basically found all all of these numbers now also know that you can see the other half this is the employer half social security and medicare same numbers that's why i'm just multiplying it times two because they'll be the same so if we go back over here we then have found this number this number this number this number this number this number <laughs> this is just adding up some numbers up top so we could find there's nothing new there this is our taxes adding up more numbers nothing new there and then we have the liability portion down here and that's that's going to be not from our payroll reports but the actual checks we wrote so we're gonna have to go see what the checks we wrote were because remember we should end up with zero due at the end of the day if we go what we're looking at here is the liability calculation and so, and we've used these numbers from this report to, pay, to figure out the liability calculation to figure out the payments we could go to a vendor report so if we go up and select reports and then we're going to go down to vendors and payable and let's go down to the transaction list by vendor transaction list by vendor and I'm going to change the date range from 010121 to 123121. So that's going to be the year we're working on. Note that if we had a lot of vendors, we'd have to scroll down. We're looking for the United States Treasury. That's who we paid here. The EDD are the payments for the SUTA payments that we have made. Now, if we just want the fourth quarter, we have to go through here and say, okay, when were the fourth quarter payments made? 
and we could see that we had this payment on 1015 which is in the fourth quarter when we made the payment but again there's kind of a difference there what really happened is we made that for the prior uh quarter the first quarter payment was on 1115 which we made for october and then 1215 and then there should actually be another here which we're going to say i'm going to have to change the dates here outside the year to go to 01 15 that's when we made the payment and 22 the next year so that we can see the payment that we made for the for the end of uh, december so again be careful of that if there's a problem with applying out the payment or a problem with the liability and we think everything is good what's the problem probably the fact that there's some kind of difference in terms of the timing of when the payment was made and to what quarter it was applied to so if we then take out the calculator here we're going to say all right the last quarters we're going to be 11 the last three here so we've got i'll start at the bottom 11415.01 plus the 14316.61 plus the 15755.01 these three items is going to give us the 4148663 and that's going to be where we can derive our item here and again, it's off from our from our example problem in Excel, mainly just rounding differences that we had as we go through there. But that's one way we get the actual payment. Remember, there's two, two items we're going to have on this form, the liability half and the payment half. The liability half is going to be the, the reports. The payment half is what we actually paid. So we can go to the vendors and see those payments, what the, the actual cash that went out of our checking account. We won't go through all the reports and how they tie together again here, but remember that the 941s, if we add them up and we add up the, the wages for them, we should get to basically the, a yearly number for the, each quarter, obviously. And the same information that is on the, the 941s, many of the, the same details in the same reports, the payroll summary report, can be used then to fill out the W-2s. And, and we can see how this report will be used to basically draw in and fill in the W-2 uh, reports for each employee and then the W-3, which is in essence a summary of the W-2s. So I won't go through and, and list all that out from QuickBooks, but the similar reports that we have here within QuickBooks to our reports that we generated in the Excel problem would then be used to fill out the year-end reports in a similar fashion. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.